what is the central bank? What do they do? Who formed it? What okay. caused it? Like, what are the pros and cons of a central bank? Well, so a central bank is a separate department from the government, federal government. So there are there are two separate departments. Is it government owned or? It's government operated, but it's a separate department, right? So you've got the actual Fed, and then you've got central banks. Right. You've got two separate divisions. You're referring to Canada or U.S. right now? Both. Okay. They're supposedly two, two separate departments. Supposedly, they're not supposed to talk to each other. They've got two different mandates. Because I was, I, I, I heard that yeah. the Federal Reserve in the States is a privately owned corporation. Yeah. yeah. But what about the central bank in, is central bank in Canada? Is that the Bank of Canada? Yes, Bank the, of Canada. So Bank of Canada is the central bank in Canada. Yeah. And then the central bank in the States is called the Federal Reserve. Exactly. Okay. And then so they, the saying is the Federal Reserve in the States was formed by a group of wealthy individuals. Yeah. But what about the one in Canada? Well, the one in Canada, that's a very good question. I actually don't know. <laughs> okay. Okay. So it, it might be public. It might be a private yeah. organization. Okay. So, but they formed it. What do they do? So whether it's the Fed or the Bank of Canada, their primary objective is to control the monetary policies. Meaning Meaning money supply and interest rates. That's their job. Money supply and okay, how much money is in the economy? Or out. And comes out. Yeah. Okay. And how high or low the interest rate is. Okay. Okay. That's their job. Okay. okay. So what they do is they look at the economy. Are we overheating? Are we inflation de- high or low? Yeah. Are we depressed or in unemployment rates too high or too low? Their job is to just look at those data and adjust the money supply and interest rates. Okay. So just a refresher. You want to tell the audience like a basic question. What's a depression versus recession? Well, they're essentially similar. Okay. Depression is is just prolonged of a recession. Oh, okay, got it. So a recession just means that, you know, you've got, by definition, you've got two quarters of declining economic activity, right? That's, uh, by definition, a... So that's when the inflation is super high? Or super low. Super low, okay. Inflation is super low, and then economic activity is really low. Yeah, and then you've got two quarters of uh, declining GDP. And that's called a recession? Recession. Okay. But if you have a prolonged period of declining GDP, that's where depression comes in. Prolonged meaning like a year's worth or like two years worth or? A, a, a year, two years, oh, three okay. years. That's what they call it. Depression. depression. Okay. Yeah. So, you know, the Great Depression back in uh, 1928, like yeah. their GDP was low for the longest time and they, they uh, couldn't get out of it. But that's why they call it Great Depression because it just prolonged. Nobody can get out of it. So if it's a recession, yeah. what like, so this relates back to the central bank. The, of course, I'm guessing central bank tries to avoid a recession and a depression. Their objective is to avoid it, yes. Yeah, yeah. Yes. so how do they do that? They simply, I mean, it's much more technical yeah, of course. behind the scenes, but they basically, again, just look at the inflation and un- unemployment rate. So which goes back to the Phillips curve. They need to balance unemployment rate and inflation. And so that's they, a tough task. So they want to curb inflation, but they don't want to have too many people unemployed. Yeah, exactly. So they'll, they'll have a you know, mm. decent amount of people unemployed and then a decent inflation. Uh, so okay. that's their job. They need to balance that that, that two factors. 